There's a view out there that uh, the Fed have been too interventionist in financial markets. And if you look back at the state of play the last couple of months, we've had the economy in a deep recession, but you've had financial markets, stock markets making it to all time highs. Do you accept some responsibility that the Fed's balance sheet expansion has altered uh, a free market price discovery? Any monetary policy action changes the relative cost of borrowing. And that's true for short-term interest rates and that's true for long-term interest rates. So the asset purchase program tends to focus on long-term interest rates. The federal funds rate is the mechanism to address a lot of the short-term rates. Both are currently quite accommodative. Um, I think that's been one reason why uh, we haven't seen more economic disruption, that both fiscal and monetary policy have been unusually stimulative during a period where in the absence of that, we'd be in a much worse situation than we currently are. It does distort markets, but that's how monetary policy works by making the cost of credit uh, less expensive at a time when many organizations and many individuals are less willing to take on that debt. But to pick up on that, uh, your colleague, Randall Quarles, just a few weeks ago said that the sheer volume of the treasury market has out outpaced the ability of the private market infrastructure to support stress of any sort there. So to paraphrase this, uh, he's almost saying that the treasury market is too big of an animal to be controlled by itself. The Fed will have to keep intervening to make sure that the piping still works. Uh, do you also have that view? I, I definitely agree with that view that in March, we were seeing severe market disruptions. We saw uh, inability to do transactions at reasonable prices. Um, that was true in the government securities market. It was also true in the broader markets. That's one reason why the Federal Reserve had to do uh, widespread intervention was because those markets were so badly disrupted. So the fact that uh, treasury debt is expanding so rapidly given the fiscal deficit and given that the balance sheet of many broker dealers has not expanded nearly as quickly, that is a problem. Another problem from a financial stability standpoint is that money market funds that were a problem during the financial crisis were also a problem this time around. So I think there's a number of things that we have to re-examine in terms of the infrastructure of our system to make sure we're more robust when, um, people decide to reallocate their funds in a very significant way. Is it fair to say that going forward, the size of the Fed's balance sheet then will structurally have to be a lot higher than it was in the past and even after 2020? So we have, we're still expanding our balance sheet and many other central banks are expanding their balance sheets as well. Uh, I think that's an appropriate action during the middle of a pandemic where the economies uh, still are quite challenged. But I do think that there will come a time when we're going to want to try to get back to a more normalized balance sheet. That's not currently the situation. Uh, currently, given the pandemic, uh, given the lack of fiscal policy, I think the uh, amount of intervention we're doing is appropriate. And just a question on uh, the change of leadership. Uh, we've got a uh, president-elect Joe Biden, who was set to start in January. When President Trump came in, there was a change at the top, uh, replaced uh, Yellen with uh, Powell at the time. Are you now expecting a change of leadership as well within the, uh, the Fed, or are you expecting a uh, Chair Powell to continue? At this point, we don't. We have a president-elect, but not everybody agrees that the president, who the president-elect is. Uh, we, we're not sure exactly what the composition of the Senate's going to be. So I think at this stage, it's really hard to understand exactly uh, what the dynamics are going to be in the federal government. Um, obviously, that has an impact on what kind of appointments we have in organizations like the Federal Reserve. But until some of the other uh, election disputes get resolved, I think it's probably premature to speculate on what the longer run impact will be.